Our next uh, speaker is a nurse. She's been called one of the 100 most powerful people in health care. She's been called uh, Minnesota's, uh, among Minnesota's 100 most influential health care leaders. And the uh, Star Tribune, Star and Sickle, as sometimes we call them down in Minneapolis, asked of her, is she a health care power or a health care pain? I mean, she's on our side. She is the president of the Citizens Council for Health Freedom. Please welcome Twyla Brays. Okay, well, I just uh, spent three hours on the road cruising up here, having been here just this weekend, and then getting asked and coming right back. And I'm very pleased to come here and talk to you about the importance of health care as an issue for our country, because freedom is what our country is about. Freedom is the reason why we have people coming from every country trying to get into this country where they can, they can live out their dreams where they can have dreams and have a chance to fulfill them, where they can work hard and achieve. And if we don't have freedom, we don't have America. And if we don't have health freedom, we don't have freedom because nothing is more important to freedom than the fact that you get to decide when you live, how you, I'm sorry, how you live, when you die, and the value of your life. When the government takes over health care, it means that they get to decide how valuable you are for those dollars. It means they get to decide perhaps whether you can have a kidney after the age of 65 or whether you can have surgery over the age of 72 or whether or not there's any health care available for you if you end up in the hospital. These are the decisions that happen when the government takes over health care and you don't have any choice, any control, and the doctors are all under their control. So the fight over Ob Obamacare, which has been going on uh, starting a year before it got passed, and now about 15 months since it, since it got passed, is a critical fight for this country. And this is a critical time in our country's history where we will decide whether or not we will be free or whether we will give up our freedom. So I want to tell you I want to tell you some of the reasons why you should con be concerned about Obamacare. I'm just going to give you five. And the, the Obamacare bill is 2,700 pages long. And almost nobody in Congress, maybe nobody in Congress, read it. 700 of the 2,700 pages are a rewrite of the IRS code. In other words, IRS law. In order to allow the government to, to share information from the state to the federal government, to send it to the IRS to do, so that they know whether or not you are insured and whether or not you have to pay the penalty for not buying the government required health insurance. So that there are the 2,700 pages are filled with all sorts of things that people are still finding out about. Maybe some of you have heard about the fact that now the people who uh, there are people whose social security will not be counted as income, and so suddenly they will be essentially Medicaid eligible. Brand new. We're 15 months from its passage, and we just figured out that this is in there. What else is in there that we don't know? What else is in there that's going to cost us all as taxpayers or take away our rights as citizens or tell our doctors how to practice medicine or say what we can and cannot do with our money? We have no idea everything that might be found in that bill. So here are just five reasons why you should consider joining with me to stop Obamacare in its tracks, not only here in Minnesota, but at the federal level. At the federal level, it needs to be repealed, but at the state level, it needs to be stopped. And the fact of the matter is, Obamacare cannot be implemented across this country unless state legislators let it. Obamacare requires and needs the help of state legislators to make it happen. So it's really important for you as constituents, if you don't want the national government to take over your health care, you have to keep the, uh, your legislators' feet to the fire and tell them, no, no, no. So here are five reasons. Number one, a federal takeover of health care is a federal takeover of your life. They get to decide how valuable you are when you are no longer valuable. What is productivity? Are you productive? Are you worth the dollars that would be spent on your health care? Number two, the cost of Obamacare keeps rising. 
Perhaps you remember when it was less than $1 trillion. This was a big deal for the president to, have, to be able to say the $900 billion number did not cross over into $1 trillion. But the Congressional Budget Office just came out and said or, that it's already $1.445 trillion. And we haven't even got it implemented yet. It doesn't get implemented until 2014. And already the price is going up significantly from what it was promised to be. Um, number three, there are two death panels. Well, they're not death panels, actually, but they're the panels that were being discussed as those who will make the decisions about what kind of health care is available to you. Number, the first one is IPAB. It's the Medicare Independent Payment Advisory Board, IPAB. And Congress, the House, is going to hold a hearing on July 13th, an all-day hearing on IPAB, and talk about how this board of 15 people will make decisions for the entire country about how doctors will be paid. And the interesting thing about IPAB is it was given supra-congressional uh, supra authority. In other words, its decisions go forward unless Congress can get its act together, all of them, to say no. And how hard is it for Congress to get its act together? I expect that lots of people will have their health care rationed away from them while Congress tries and figures out all the uh, procedural things it needs to do to try and stop what IPAB has decided must be done. The other panel is called um, PCORI, P-C-O-R-I, or Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute, PCORI. And this institute is going to have access to all of our medical records because HIPAA is not a privacy law. It's actually a disclosure law. You probably don't know that. But it, it opens up all your medical records and requires them to be put online and made electronic. And so that 2.2 million entities can have access to your medical records without your consent, according to the federal government. So... Uh, PCORI will have access to all your data to conduct research to say what is what is effective health care and what kind of health care should be allowed by people, should be paid for, and what kind shouldn't be. So if they think it's not effective, if they think it's not cost effective, they will tell the Secretary of Health and Human Services, you know, we don't think that you should do this, and we've, we've done all this research, and thus and so, thus we say. Well, now, look at yourselves. Look all around you. Are any of you the same this kind of um this kind of way to do medicine as though we were all cookie cutter people as though we were all widgets in the toyota factory is not the way we are we're as individual as our dna we have different preferences different uh side effects from different medications we have different dna we have different re uh, religious convictions we have we have different all sorts of things but this is a way to universalize one-size-fits-all treatment and to force all doctors to do it because the government says we won't pay you for these things that we've decided are not effective. Okay, number four. Um, Obamacare requires a federal control and command center to be established in every state. Now, this is something that they are dependent on your legislators to put in. It's called the uh, Health Insurance Exchange, or as the law calls it, the American Health Benefits Exchange. And this is something that um, Senator Hoffman has been instrumental in stopping in the Senate. And Representative... <laughs> and Representative Mary Franson has been instrumental in stopping in the House. <laughs> So um, uh, Grace Marie Turner of the Galen Institute in Washington, D.C. says if you put the exchange into state law, essentially what the government, the state government becomes is a contractor for the federal government's takeover of health care. So this is something we do not want, and some people are going around with petitions in their hands asking you to sign our petition against the exchange. The session is not over, and while the session, well, the session is over, but the negotiations aren't in a special session will be called. And we don't want the exchange to be part of the negotiated agreement, although, although Governor Dayton wants it. He wants to help President Obama take over the health care system in Minnesota to create a national health care system and eventually a single-payer system through these exchanges. So please, 
Uh, there are people going around with our petitions. Please sign one. Or there's also some here at the at the table under here, and, and we just need every petition that we can. They're also online if you know other people who aren't here today. So um, this exchange has been called wrongly a one-stop shop for health insurance. But it's really like a lobster trap. Now, this is not exactly a seafaring community here. But a lobster trap, the lobster crawls in and they can't get out. And that's what happens with the exchange. Once you get into the exchange, they start collecting data on you. They make you dependent on their subsidies. And eventually, all the employers are going to shift all their people into the exchange. And the exchange is going to send data to the federal government. And the exchange is going to make sure you can only have access to certain health insurance. And you can have access to only certain benefits. And they will control insurance and medical care in the state of Minnesota. It's also, by the way, the police function for the unconstitutional mandate that you buy the government's health insurance. So they will tell the IRS, this person has not bought health insurance. Penalize them on their tax form. That is one thing that is key to the health insurance exchange. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to say is that Obamacare is going to get into all the nitty gritty of the details of your life. $2 billion per year is allotted to try to make you healthy. And the HHS just came out with their national prevention strategy, and it says they want to turn the whole healthcare system away from caring for disease and illness. They want to move it into preventing disease, illness, and injury altogether. This is a pipe dream. It's completely impossible. If you think you're not going to get sick or you think you're not going to die, impossible. This idea means that they're going to go into, use your employer, they're going to use your community, they want to set up community grants and employer grants to try to make you eat right, exercise right, um, do what they think is necessary for you to be healthy. It could even get eventually into your genes. A and by that I mean G-E-N-E-S, as in your genetic structure. If you've got something wrong in your genetic structure, maybe you have a requirement that you change it. Gene therapy to make sure you're not an expense to this system. So th these are, uh, oh, and of course the last thing is that there's 20 new taxes and only one of them has been repealed. So do you want Obamacare? No! Okay, so you have to help. You have to help me. You have to ha help your uh, representatives to know what direction to turn and what not to do. Make sure that on July 4th, when they're walking down the street, right, waving hi to you, you make sure you get in there and you say, by the way, representative so-and-so, no Obamacare health insurance exchange. Do not put that thing in this state. Do not let the federal government take over health care by putting the federal mechanism into state law. Thank you very much. This question is for Twyla, really, and all of you. Thank you all for standing up for our rights. How do we get the people that are disabled, elderly, to understand the implications of this health care bill? If we don't get through to them, they think it's all free and they're going to be taken care of forever. I mean, down in St. Minneapolis last week, you had people in disabled chairs and stuff praising Obamacare. How do you get them to see they will not be in it for long? Um, thank you for that question. I think um, the con the concern the people who are disabled and the people who are elderly have a dependency, and it's a built-in dependency, and it's a government uh, entitlement. And the only way that they can see a path forward is to believe that the government is going to be there, and that Obamacare promises something for them that they need. And when if they'd actually look into the bill, and some of the things are in the handout that I had passed out, if they actually looked into the bill, they would see that other people get to make decisions. Yes, everybody will be covered. Well, unless it's ruled unconstitutional. But uh, other people will decide what coverage means. And one of the important things that I like to tell people is that uh, coverage does not mean care. As a matter of fact, in lots of countries, there is no care uh, if you're outside certain guidelines. And so um, this is something for the disabled, this is something for the elderly to understand is just being covered is not security. Real coverage is the freedom to get the health care that you need and even at a price that you can afford. And as we move into a national health care system, that 
those decisions will be made and affordability will be decreased, which means it will be ever harder for anyone to get access to the health care that they need because unless the government or somebody else supplies it for them, they will not have enough money to do it. So they have to start to see their own vulnerability. And right now, they still believe in the government.